Hello. This uh, video will take you through the key features of the 1875 crisis that's called the War in Sight crisis. Um, the first slide there um, is a contemporary cartoon that was drawn. It tells you a little story in itself. You can see Bismarck, um, the Chancellor of Germany, shown to be the puppeteer. Um, the three emperors, um, the, 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 the emperors shown there, um, are the emperors of Germany, Austria, Hungary and Russia. Um, and of course that's part of the story is that Bismarck saw himself as somebody who could ma manipulate monarchs. Um, uh, one of the outcomes of the war in sight crisis is that uh, uh, Bismarck learned the difficult lesson um, that there were occasions where uh, the monarchs acted beyond his own control. So there we are, a story about Bismarck the arch manipulator. Let's move on. So the usual slide, you can see um, the this is the last of um, the lessons on the depth study, ruling the Second Reich, our first depth study. That was the flip learning for this lesson. Thinking in terms of the long-term and immediate-term causes and then the immediate outcomes and the long-term outcomes. Follow through after this um, lesson, uh, William Carr um, covers this in, uh, covers this well. Um, it's not a it's not a long um, section in his book. It's pages one hundred and forty seven to eight. But uh, there's enough good detail there for you to um, develop some good extra detail into your notes. So for that reason, I have um, made a Quizlet for you. Um, uh, 25 questions about Bismarck's early foreign policy and the wait and see crisis, um, all taken from pages 147 to 8 of William Carr. Um, as you can see, um, you have been added uh, to the uh, the list of classes, so you, should, you will be able to see that if you go to uh, the 12D history class area. Um, thirdly, uh, Evans, um, in his book, The Pursuit of Power, the, the section called The Great War We All Hope For, which is a section about uh, the foreign policies of the great powers um, in the, the final years of the 19th century and the, f the first 14 years of the 20th century, leading to the outbreak of war in 1914. Um, there's a, a, a short extract, uh, extract there. There's a screenshot. It's the very beginning, the, the opening paragraph. Um, of that. We'll come back to that in a second. That's the crisis in a nutshell, just condensed down to 10 points. So um, I suggest I, I won't read them to you um, because the remainder of the slides will take you through and I will explain these points in more detail. Um, but if you just pause this video and just read through those 10 points and then continue. And there is the mind map. So the usual, uh, map out the key points, um, starting with foreign policy. Um, you can see the strand there, uh, which is where we will start. OK, um, think in, in terms of those words precariousness, and that's referring to Bismarck's um, foreign policy position at the beginning of the 1870s. That word status quo is maintaining the status quo, the French danger, and then the Three Emperors League. So we'll we'll pick up those strands now. Okay, so what you've got on the left there is the text from Evans, um, which um, again I would say just pause this video now and read it. Um, you, you might find it a little bit difficult, but I'll I'll um, then take you through some of the key points that he's explaining. But just just read it through, get a sense. Um, of what the issues were in foreign policy, and then press play again. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to um, zoom in and let's have a look at the map. So you, you've already picked up um, that one of the key things to focus in on is that Germany, you can see Germany there on the map, Deutschland, the new Germany, um, uh, 
created in 1871 as a result of war, a war between Prussia and France, which France lost. Uh, very quickly, in 1872, um, and it was finally signed off in 1873, um, Bismarck's first foreign policy um, venture was to forge an agreement, a league, between the three emperors. Now, you look one look at the map of um, Europe there, and it's a very, very different map to the, the, the type of map you see in the 20th century. Of course, if you look at the map of Europe in the 20th century, there are lots of nation states. Um, in 1871, um, the, there were very few nation states because nation states hadn't been formed. Um, a nation state is a, is a country for the people of that nationality. So, for example, um, we now have a country called Poland. You look at the map, there is no country called Poland. Uh, where the um, Poles um, live, um, I'll just use a slightly different colour to sort of represent this, but the Poles um, are people who um, live in this region of Europe. And as you can see, um, they don't have a country of their own. Um, because what you have dominating Europe in 1871 are three empires. Now, an empire, by definition, is a, um, is a country that consists of multinationalities. Uh, so in yellow, you've got the, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, ruled by Emperor Franz Joseph. There were actually 15 different nationalities um, living within Austria-Hungary. There were Poles, there were Czechs, um, uh, Galicians, Hungarians, and so on and so forth. Um, you've got the Russian Empire, <coughs> and the um, Emperor of Russia was called the Tsar, Tsar Alexander II in 1871. Um, and likewise, multinationalities. There are Ukrainians, um, uh, Lithuanians, Latvians, Russians, obviously, and so on and so forth, and Poles. Um, and then, of course, Germany, that came into existence in 1871, was an empire because it wasn't just Germans living there. There were French, there were Danes, there were Poles, and so on and so forth. So Europe was dominated by empires um, that were ruled by a type of monarch called an emperor. Um, and these three huge empires um, uh, came together in 1872 to three as a result of an initiative by Bismarck, he, who formed the League of the Three Emperors. So why did he do this? Well, there were three reasons um, that Bismarck uh, wanted to do that forge this. First of all, um, it was... Um, it was to do with the rise of socialism, okay? Working class movements existed in all three countries that Bismarck could see them growing and expanding with industrialization. And of course, as we know, socialists were pushing for political change. Um, they wanted more democracy. They wanted um, the masses to have a say in the running of countries. And the Marxists, the most extreme socialists, of course, were pushing for radical change, redistribution of wealth, a challenge to the traditional way of running things and of course the traditional way of running things was a powerful monarch in these th th these cases emperors the upper classes ruling those countries so the first reason for the the creation of the, the league of the three emperors uh, was to work together to preserve social order preserve the old order the second reason um, was of course to do with austria as you know um, Austria was excluded from Germany's unification in 1871. So br bringing Austria into a league, a partnership, um, a friendly partnership of the three emperors, it was in a sense a way of controlling Austria because Bismarck was worried about Austria. Um, Austria was not just only excluded, but also was a strongly Catholic country. And as we know, Bismarck was pursuing a very anti-Catholic policy in Germany. Um, so that was, in a sense, a way of controlling that. Um, but the other reason that uh, Bismarck formed a League of Three Emperors, and probably the most important, of course, comes down to France, because France um, uh, had been defeated in the, the War of 1871, and as we know, um, France lost um, a huge bit of territory 
to the newly created Germany, the territory of Alsace-Lorraine. And Bismarck was convinced that France would be looking at, at, at the earliest opportunity to go to war against Germany to take Alsace-Lorraine back. So therefore, um, the immediate reason for forming the League of the Three Emperors was um, to isolate France, to make sure that France was isolated. Um, Bismarck was anxious that France, for example, if France formed an alliance with Russia um, to the east, and, and Russia would have good reason to do that, because when Germany was formed, Russia suddenly found a, new, a, new, a, a brand new country, Germany, bordering her that could be seen as a threat to Russia. So, um, therefore, by forming a, a, a League of Friendship with Russia, um, that prevents France forming a friendship with Russia, um, and therefore isolates France. Um, Bismarck was also conscious of um, England. Uh, England was a, a monarchy ruled by Queen Victoria. Traditionally, England and France um, were, were enemies. So Bismarck wasn't too worried about, um, about England, but likewise, um, Bismarck needed to be sure that France would not seek a partnership with England and it was in Bismarck's interest to again um, make sure that the traditional hostility between England and France continued so everything was really therefore about isolating France keeping France isolated and the League of the Three Emperors was part of that okay so all of that is kind of explored there by Evans in that piece of text and in particular um, the uh, in particular, sort of in the middle there, um, it talks about uh, detaching Russia from France and bringing in Austria-Hungary um, and uh, and uh, the, the fear, the threat of France finding allies in its search to regain Alsace-Lorraine. Um, so hopefully that sort of like helps you understand that. Let's move on. Okay, so let's focus now on the long-term causes of the uh, wait-and-see crisis. So by the mid-1870s, France had recovered considerably from her defeat in 1871. Um, and in the early 1870s, um, France pursued a much more aggressive foreign policy. Um, and that worried Bismarck. Now, as we know, Bismarck um, was, um, in the early 1870s, uh, at loggerheads with the Pope, um, Pius IX in Rome, because Bismarck was persecuting German Catholics. Um, and another sort of like concern was that France was actually a Catholic nation. So the concern was that um, German Catholics may look towards France um, to support their cause, and particularly as France was um, pursuing a much more aggressive foreign policy, um, which worried Bismarck that France was preparing ultimately to go to war to recover Alsace-Lorraine. Uh, and there were genuine signs French Catholic bishops criticised the Kulter camp. Um, in 1874 Bismarck gave a strong warning to the French government that he did not want them siding with the Pope against Germany. Then the immediate cause, the immediate um, cause for the war and site crisis um, came down to um, as often did in Germany, military issues. Now, as you know, Germany in 1871 was formed by war. Um, it was the Franco-Prussian War. Um, the Pr Prussian military created Germany. Um, the Prussian military were, as you know, very dominant in everything to do with Germany. They dominated the civil service, the top jobs in government. Um, even Bismarck himself and many of the other uh, the members of the, the, the cabinet were wore military uniform when they were in office. Um, the leader of the German military was this man here, Helmut von Moltke. Um, so basically what happened was, in 1873, the French um, government passed a law called the French Army Organisation uh, Law, which uh, increased the number of, or proposed to increase the number of French infantry battalions from three to four. That would, if, um, it would take a, a while to happen, but um, the plan was that by 1878, the French army would have increased 10% from 720,000 men, adding another 80,000 to uh, reach a total of 800,000 men. And von Moltke um, seriously considered and proposed, raised the question that actually, rather than um, wait for war to happen, because he was convinced that at some, the reason that France was increasing its army was to 
attack Germany to get Alsace-Lorraine back, um, that it would be better um, to if Germany attacked France um, first, um, whilst France, while well, whilst the French army was at its current size of 720,000 men uh, that if you wait for it to increase to 800,000 then um, the chance of defeating France will decrease so a preventive war to attack first Bismarck didn't want to risk that um, he understandably said well we are a new nation um, only just appeared in 1871 um, other countries in Europe are going to be very nervy about a brand new nation state that's just appeared in the middle of in the heart of Europe and we need to be sending out all the signals that we are a peace loving nation um, and we don't want to be um, uh, jeopardised our own existence as a country by by striking out against France um, but he acknowledged that von Moltke was right and he said well, yeah, clearly we have got to put pressure on the French um, but Bismarck's plan was not by going to war but by other means and his strategy was to use the press um, which was a strategy Bismarck liked to do and he's sort of bypassing official channels there he's not sort of going um, through diplomacy um, but he's actually going directly to the people because newspapers were read by by the, the people of the countries so he published an, an article in the Cologne uh, newspaper the Kölnisch Zeitung um, um, alleging that the two Catholic nations of France and Austria were plotting war against Germany. Um, and then four days later, on the 9th of April, 1875, um, another newspaper article written by Bismarck appeared in the Berlin Post, in which he alleged that um, there were other government leaders who were talking about war being in sight. And Bismarck was sort of presenting himself. It's not me, but you need to be aware that there are people in the in the German government who are advocating that we could that a war between Germany and France could happen very very soon. So, it was a very inflammatory, um, quite risky strategy because um, he is using newspapers to sort of inflame popular opinions on the streets, ordinary French and German people. Um, sort of on the streets of Germany reading these papers um, but it was his indirect way of sending a message to the, Fran to the French you need to back down but he doesn't want to go to war which is what von Moltke wanted to happen now Bismarck did follow that up with diplomatic action through the usual channels okay so he sent von Moltke's report um, uh, about the French uh, about French military expansion, he sent it to the to the British government. Um, again, Britain was France's traditional enemy, so clearly what he's trying to do there is is trying to again isolate France further by alarming the British um, about uh, French uh, military intent uh, military intentions. Um, he also told the French ambassador. In Berlin, that many Reichstag politicians were seriously considering considering launching a preventative war. So it's a sort of multi-pronged uh, uh, attack here, but it's again very much part of his policy of isolating France and put, um, uh, and and put it, putting pressure on the French to abandon their policy um, by diplomatic isolation, but also by inflaming popular opinion at the street level. So the immediate consequence. Well, the immediate consequence was something that Bismarck didn't expect and wasn't used to. As you know, Bismarck was the head of government. Okay, He was not the head of state. The head of states were the, were the monarchs. In Germany, it was the German Kaiser Wilhelm I. Um, and, but traditionally, the, you know, Bismarck has been the lead head of government in Germany now for four years. And before that, of course, he was, the, and he still is, the minister president of Prussia, and uh, Kaiser Wilhelm I, of course, is the King of Prussia as well. And Wilhelm I, as both King of Prussia and as Emperor of Germany, had always been a very hands-off emperor, very happy just to let, gov let Bismarck make the decisions um, it, uh, both domestically and in terms of foreign policy. But um, something then unusual happened is um, the Bismarck did not expect the, the three monarchs um, in this particular case, the Russians, the French and the British kind of like grabbed hold of the problem themselves and took 
sort of unilateral decision, okay, to, to, to try to diffuse the, 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 the tension. Yeah, Bismarck's strategy of creating alarm at the possibility of war um, was supposed to put fresh pressure on the French, but actually it put pressure on, in particular, the Russians and Queen Victoria of Britain. So the Russian Tsar, Alexander II, um, visited uh, Germany, um, and um, likewise Queen Victoria of Britain then stepped in, and they both had private talks with Kaiser Wilhelm I. Um, and as a result of those talks, suddenly the Russian Chancellor, Alexander Gorchakov, who was the head of government in Russia, suddenly announced to the, to the press that um, peace had now been assured, that the monarchs had worked together and that there was no risk of war happening. Now, Gorchakov was furious. He was angry, he was humiliated because he had been bypassed. Um, so... The crisis was resolved, um, although France did continue to build up her army, um, but it was a big setback for Bismarck. He was forced to back down in his attacks against the French um, because his own head of state, his own emperor, plus the Queen of Britain and the Emperor of Russia, um, had, had stepped in um, to restore the... The, the the amount that to restore the peace in the face of a mountain crisis so he was angry he was humiliated he blamed both Br russia and britain who he felt were interfering in germany's affairs uh, he wasn't used to this and bismarck was very much used to always being the person in control um, and he also felt undermined because the direction of german policy was now being set by the monarchs not by himself as head of government so he felt very demoted as a result of this particular crisis. So the final strand then, a failure for Bismarck. Okay, question mark, was it a failure for Bismarck? Long-term significance. Okay, all sorts of issues here, okay, that we can read into and see all sorts of issues. Certainly the crisis is important because it, it demonstrates the influence of the German military on the government. OK, that uh, Bismarck, uh, it, government is not just being controlled by Bismarck. Helmut von Moltke stepped in um, and urged a preventative war. Bismarck didn't want that to happen. Um, the preventative war, yes, didn't happen, but it was resolved in a different way. Um, so, um, but it certainly demonstrates the influence of the German military, which, of course, we know. Um, but it's a kind of illustration of that. It also demonstrates the problems um, with Bismarck's strategy of using the press, um, he, he, his policy backfired. Um, it was supposed to sort of inflame fear on the streets of, 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 of France and Germany to sort of raise awareness that there could be a war, but actually it, it created fear at the top level of government with the actual monarchs themselves who stepped in. So he learned that he needed to be more careful uh, in the way in which he managed things. Um, his rhetoric, his language towards the French um, had been um, very damaging, um, making allegations about Catholic conspiracies um, against Germany. Uh, and so as a result of the wait and, and see crisis, uh, Bismarck sort of like toned down his language. Um, we don't see that so much in the latter part of his rule as Chancellor. Um, other points, it's weakened the three emperors league um we can now see you, know, you often couldn't see these things at the time but it did damage germany's relations with russia and of course we now know that 20 years later russia then abandoned germany and russia the word the thing that bismarck had feared above everything else russia formed an alliance with france in 1894 and of course that is how the sides shaped out in 1914 when world war one broke out France was allied with Russia, and so when Germany went to war against France in 1914, um, Germany had to fight a two-front war, and that was, of course, Bismarck's biggest fear. Um, everything to do with his foreign policy was about isolating France, but um, in a sense, Bismarck had sowed the seed that had led to Russia eventually abandoning Germany. 
Um, the crisis also encouraged a growing unease throughout Europe about the diplomatic goals of the new German Empire. Um, uh, you know, sort of Bismarck had inflamed a situation that this new country of Germany might attack France. And that did create unease. Um, and so therefore there was a sense of watchfulness of other nations, other nations who traditionally would not have been enemies of Germany are now not too sure about this new Germany. Um, so Bismarck was forced to take into account that Germany's fast-growing power was causing fear and alarm among Germany's neighbours. And so the final point then is Bismarck, after 1875, had to change his strategy for preserving peace. Um, bullying would no longer work. Um, so he was, again, very, very conscious of the fact that France um, was an enemy. Um, and the, the basic policy of keeping France isolated never changed. But bullying, um, taking an aggressive stance uh, to isolate France, had failed in 1875. So after 1878, he became more proactive, uh, less reactive. Remember, a reactive policy is an opportunist policy. Watch on, wait and and see and grab opportunities as they appear. But Bismarck needed realised he needed to be more pro proactive in creating um, a situation that would isolate France. So what his policy was, was to try um, from 1878 onwards to um, encourage Fra French conflict with other European powers by encouraging the French towards colonialism in all sorts of subtle ways. Now, as you can see from the map to the right, um, the main area for um, colonial expansion is what we call the scramble for Africa. European nations in the, in the 1800s uh, were seizing parts of Africa. Africa was underdeveloped, uh, incapable of defending itself. Um, so um, various parts of Africa were being colonised by different European countries. Um, the traditional countries that were colonising Africa it were in particular Britain and Italy. Even Belgium um, colonised um, significant chunks of, of Africa. Um, France was very late into doing this and Germany under Bismarck Bismarck said well, Germany absolutely must not get involved in this scramble for colonies because if Germany gets involved ra racing for colonies then it could bring Germany into conflict with other European powers and Bismarck didn't want that to happen so Bismarck was very very firm in his belief that Germany should not be a colonial power let the British and the Italians and other European countries come into conflict with each other with a scramble for colonies around the world. So what Bismarck basically did is he encouraged the French to join that scramble, uh, believing that by doing that, um, it would, um, it would, in particular, um, damage French relations with other European countries, in particular the British, but also the Italians, and that therefore France would become isolated in European affairs and if Germany stay out of that race then Germany on the back of that could work to strengthen her relations with the other European powers um, thus isolating France um, by encouraging the French into a policy of colonialism. So that's really the significance of the wait and see crisis. Um, the um, next lesson then is we're moving beyond depth study one. We're going to be now going to the breadth study. Um, and the and, and the topic of the next lesson is, is on this, okay? Bismarck, as you know, um, stayed as Chancellor of Germany until 1890. The last two years of his chancellorship, uh, he saw a new Kaiser, a new young 29-year-old Kaiser, Wilhelm II, um, who became Kaiser in 1888, and Bismarck didn't get on well with him, and within two years, Bismarck had basically resigned. And the new Kaiser, um, as you can see, um, led Germany until um, the end of World War I, uh, and the new Kaiser, 29 years old when he became Kaiser, um, was very focused on expanding Germany's global power and building up colonies, exactly what Bismarck said 
Germany must not do. And that thus is the sort of like key point about why um, Bismarck resigned in 1890, because the Kaiser um, was absolutely focused on that Germany needed to join the race for colonies, um, which, of course, Bismarck um, said we mustn't do. We must let the French do that so that they, the French go into conflict with other European powers. So that will be the theme. So there, there's, there are the points for your flip learning uh, for the next lesson, which I think will be on uh, Friday. Uh, thank you very much. Hopefully that was useful to you.